Hey scrappy friends, Iris here with a process video for Colorcast Designs. I am doing a Travis notebook and I went with hybrid. It was one of my goals to start doing more hybrid because I can get a different look and aesthetic and I can do certain things easier than just with paper products. I start off with a file from the Ali Edwards Tech Story Kit. It's an element that looks like a phone. The first thing I did was select the crop tool and at the top entered the dimensions of Travelers Notebook page, four and a quarter by eight and a quarter at 300 pixels per inch. And I'm gonna crop tightly in around the shape itself. It's perfect ratio. Then I select the marquee tool, rectangular, and I go within the inner part of the phone just to get the dimensions. I jot down the width and height and then I open up a file from In a Creative Bubble. That's the brand name for Geraldine Sai, the digital designer. And this is from her 3x8 snapshots layered photo templates. This file is 3x8, so I'm going to go ahead and change that to the Traveler's Notebook size first. And I'm going to go ahead and do it from one side so it expands to the other. Uh, at first I had a black background. I'll be changing that in a few seconds. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the individual layers because these are masks and I'm going to resize this so that the height is the same height as the inner portion of the phone file. That was roughly 5.98. I could have rounded up to 6 inches but I really wanted it fit within the lines. Still with all the layers selected, I shift it all up to the top. I'm making room and then I'm going to duplicate all of those layers and then I move them over and flip them around. I'm not actually going to use four columns. I'm going to do three. So let me move it together and I put the middle ones overlapping each other and then I'm going to carefully go through and delete some of the overlapping ones to make sure that they're not covering any elements or that I have extra ones that are going to confuse me. Let's begin filling the grid. I grabbed the thumbnail posters for the Netflix shows that I like. Some of them I just downloaded directly to my computer and others I did screen captures. And all I'm doing is Control A for selecting the whole thing, Control C for copying, and then I'm going down on my layers list. I'm looking for the layer I want to put it on and I'm gonna click on that layer so that I can Control V to paste the poster icon or image above the layer I want. Then I select, I put my pointer in between the two layers, hold down the option key on the Mac, I think that's the Alt on the PC, and click, and that clips the photo, or in this case, the um, poster, to the little square, the mask that I want. So you always wanna put it above and then you get the mask to work properly. What I love about these masks is that you can bring in any size of image and you can resize and move around to your heart's content and it's just stuck in the little spot you want it. So I'm gonna do that until I'm happy that nothing's cut off from my poster. And now we'll do a second example. I was being strategic in which ones I used where because there are those circular elements that are cutting off part of the image. And I'm gonna put it at the top left because I feel like there's a little bit on the bottom of that image that doesn't matter if it gets cut off. Once again, I go through my layers to find the one I want. I click on the layer and then paste my image. It ends up above the layer. I hold my mouse right over the line between the image and the mask layer. Hold down the Option key, Alt on the PC, and click, clips it to the mask, and now I can resize. I'll do the rest off camera, but I wanted to show you with the circular elements, I could have left them there, I knew I was gonna cover them up, but to save some ink, I just go to the layer they're at and hit the little eyeball to turn them off, and that way I just have blank circles. Wood veneer I have says top 10. I have 12 spaces, so I'm going to fill the others with some patterns. From the In a Creative Bubble Watch and Listen journal cards, I used the marquee tool to grab a little bit of the pattern, copy it, and paste it into my mask. Do the same thing I did with the posters and resize. And then another element from that 
same set is these stars and these I'm going to copy and paste and repeat or duplicate the layers to fill in that last spot. This is what I love about doing some hybrid scrapbooking using digital products. You can customize it to whatever your needs are and resize. You don't get to do that often with the paper products. And it was really nice exercising my hybrid muscles because I hadn't really done anything with digital products, which I buy and I love and I collect and I also organize. Um, I hadn't done anything like that in a while. Now let's skip over to where I put this whole grid into my little phone page. My first step is to go back to the crop tool and extend the canvas a tiny little bit because I was right at the edge and I actually want to add an outline border to the phone. To do that, I select the phone, I go up to the menu, edit, and pick stroke. Now I'd already changed the width and color to five pixels and the color to black. And when you hit OK, you get something that matches fairly closely what's already there. Now I want to create some transparency. So the way I'm doing it, there are a few ways. The way I'm doing it is I'm selecting the quick select tool. I click on the background, which is white. I go up to the menu and hit select and then pick similar. Then I go to the eraser tool on the side. I bumped up the size of the brush all the way up so I could just click once and it erases all the white. Now you have transparent outlines. Going back to my grid file, I already had all the layers selected so I just sort of hit copy and paste it into the one with the phone. And then I decide to group the layers or link them. So I go up to the very top of the layers and go to the very bottom, click so that it all selected and then hit link. I could have done that before. or I could have even flattened the image before I copied and pasted it in, but I still wanted to have the flexibility to be able to manipulate the grid layers if I had to. As I get it in place, I adjust it just a smidge to get it within the outline in there. And that's just a personal preference. It was sized so that you could go behind those layers. But since I had it transparent, then I just resized it a little bit so that it doesn't overlap the layers. And the reason why I went with making it transparent first is I wasn't sure if I maybe wanted to add a pattern to the phone shape itself. I'm gonna go ahead and save because it's always good to do that. <laughs> And in a little, little bit, I'll be importing this into Lightroom so I can do my printing with a template. But for now, I'll go back to the other elements because I need to build up the left side of my layout. And this one is going to also be hybrid. I start with one of the cards from the In a Creative Bubble Watch and Listen journal card pack. And I'm going to change the canvas size once again to the eight and a quarter by four and a quarter, which is the TN size that I tend to always cut to. There definitely are slight differences depending on what kind of cover you have and who manufactures it. I use the Color Cast Designs wood covers and the eight and a quarter by four and a quarter is just perfect fit for that. Oh, that's right. I had to undo it and go back and change the background to another layer, add it another layer because otherwise I wouldn't be able to move these elements around. They would have been part of the entire canvas. So here we go again, added a second layer, and then now the background is transparent and the whole card can move around. I am actually going to take the marquee tool, the rectangular marquee tool, select areas that I want to take out, and then just hit delete. And that's a quick and easy way to alter elements on cards or backgrounds and that sort of thing. You can just remove them that way. What I want to keep is the now streaming around the circle element because I have circular wood veneer I'd like to put in the middle. So I'll just remove the other two. And I have my journaling typed up already in pages. So I'm just going to hop over there real quick and copy, come back make a text box and paste it in. I format it so that it looks even and I will move up the circle element to the top. And then I'm gonna save everything and import them into Lightroom so that I can print them on my templates.
Welcome to my Lightroom catalog that's just for my finished scrapbooking projects. I have other catalogs for my photos and um, some trip ones and that sort of thing. Here I've already imported just the two images. I go and look at it a little bit closer and then I'm going to go to the print module. On the left hand side I will scroll down because I had made a traveler's notebook template before. Then I realized that's in my photos catalog. I could go import it into this one, but I thought, why don't I just show you how I made it? So I'm going to start by picking one of the templates I've already got, which is one of the big ones, an 8 by 12. And then I'm going to modify this. I go to page setup. I do like to choose the printer I will normally print this with. And I'm going to go up to pick just a letter size, uh, borderless, and hit OK. So that's my new page setup. And then in the right hand side, you can switch things around. So this will fit two Traveler's Notebook pages, obviously on an 8.5 by 11, but I need to adjust the height of each, what they call cell, which is where the photos show up, or in this case, my page. I'll adjust the height and the width to the exact one I want. I realize that I need to bring down the margins first. So I zero out the margins completely. And then that way I can make each cell the correct dimension. And I'm going to move them so they're a little closer together. I'd rather have things in the middle than on the edges where it might get cut off. And now I go all the way up and hit the plus sign and save it as a new template with a new name, Traveler's Notebook. The last thing I do to make sure this template is exactly what I want is I go over to the print settings and adjust that to fit my printer. I usually use semi-gloss for most things, and because I can use this template over and over, I don't have to do any more setup. I don't have to open up Photoshop and make a template every time. So I could have just photos in my catalog. I select the two. I go to the print module. I pick that Traveler's Notebook template. Those two areas get populated automatically, and then I just hit print. Right now, I'm only going to print this page with one thing on it, the right-hand side, because I wasn't sure yet if I wanted to print the left-hand side on just plain white paper, especially photo paper, or if I wanted to use some sort of pattern paper. And so here we are with my page and all the goodies that I was considering using on this layout. I guess I didn't show it to you at the beginning. Those two polka dot tan papers are templates I made myself of the TN sized pages because I'm a very visual person. I've mostly scrapped 12 by 12. I needed something where I could, if I have product, I could just quickly see how much can I fit in this design space, which is smaller than I'm used to. I go off camera to cut at my cutting counter on my Cutter Pillar Pro, and here it is. I grab my We Are Memory Keepers corner chomper. I use the quarter inch size to round the corners, and then that's basically my base for my right hand side. That smaller iPhone sized pad is what came in the physical tech Ali Edwards story kit. I used the digital one and I sized it to what I needed. So now you can see the Colorcast Design products that I was considering using for this story. All of those acrylics and wood veneer come in one set and it's called Episode Overload. And at the top, some flair that is from the shop was called The Crafty Pocket and she just changed her name to Humble and Create. She had this whole set for Netflix, so it was perfect to go with the Colorcast design. I know myself, as much as the clean, crisp white is popular, I knew I wouldn't be happy if both sides were white. So I picked a few papers that have stars on them. I would have done the yellow except for two things. There was no other yellow on the other side. And um, I didn't think with the printing that it would show as well. So I settled on a light gray that has more of a bluer tone because there are blue elements in all the little thumbnails on the right. After all the digital work to set up the bases, all I have to do is stick things on, which was perfect. I guess I didn't take out the center of the now streaming circle to save another smidge on ink, but that's okay. All of the acrylics in the set make great titles, but I knew I wanted to use the pinned watching one. And it fits better with the programs that I picked because there's blue in that area. For now, I'm just going to tack it down with some roller adhesive. Normally, I use the red line tape or I'll use the Liquitex Mac Medium 
in the fine line bottle. But I did want to leave myself a little wiggle room because I wasn't sure if that was the final placement. And I could always go back after taking the photos and doing the video editing to glue it down with the stronger glue. The left is looking a little plain to me and it needs something else to tie it together. I took a piece of Ellie Studio from a six by six pad, striped red and white, cut a tiny strip, put it at the top. That helps balance out the red Netflix diagonally across. And then I round the corners of the page. I had to leave to go to dinner. We were celebrating my daughter's 16th birthday. When I came back, I thought it still needs something more. I brought in one of the other sets from the March release for Colorcast Designs. This one's called Me Time. Look how gorgeous with those lilacs and purples. I like that this set has long skinny phrases. And I really liked putting all four of those together. But then I thought, what if I want to use some of these in another project? So I whittled it down to one. You'll see me flip them around trying to decide which one and even try them out on other sides. But in the end, I use the alone time. It sort of extends my title to say alone time binge watching. I should mention there's this really faint line around there. You can see it where alone time is going to line up and that is the edging of the digital card. I didn't realize there was a what they call a stroke border around it, which then you print that outline. And it's kind of faint. I really actually like it as a design element and I wish I'd caught it. I will, probably would have erased it, but I actually kind of like it as a design element where it could have been darker. And see, I'm glad I used the adhesive that I could remove with my handy dandy undo because I just needed to shift that binge watching a little bit up to center it between the alone time and it now it's not encroaching so much on my journaling. And that, my friends, is the end of this process video. I hope you've enjoyed the hybrid tutorial and that you go check out the Colorcast Designs March release. Tons of fun, bright, cheerful springtime releases. Um, even more than we originally saw as the design team. She added some. If you've enjoyed this process video, I would totally appreciate some thumbs up, some comments. If you haven't subbed yet, please do that. And I will see you here next time.